Warning. The language used on the real rush may be offensive to some viewers. Don't say I didn't fucking warn you. I'm about to drop the next hot new joint, y'all. I'm, I'm talking like this shit is fire. Fuck Drake. Fuck whoever else is out there, because I don't even really listen to hip hop. It don't matter after my shit drop. I'm, it's going to be called Booty on My Face. Booty on My Face. I ain't even gonna need no auto tune or nothing. But booty on my face, you gonna check it out. Patent pending bitches on that shit. Booty on my face. Cause the chorus alone, people are gonna love that shit. People are gonna fucking love that shit. Booty on my face and watch me go. I guess if you're putting your booty on my face, then it would be more like, put your booty on my face and watch me go. Hey y'all, this episode of The Real Rush is brought to you. Bye. Yo, the Count of Monte Cristo and shit, G. I'm the Count of Monte Cristo. Yep. Bang your head to the open and riff. Shut, 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 shut up and sit down. down. Time somebody do that shit to you, you hit their ass with the Timberland throat stomp. What's happening, y'all? It's your movie review, p p p pushing man. Doom 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 doom. I'm your pushing man. Doom 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 doom. For now, now 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 now. I'm John Dub. This is the review rush. This is a Episode 9, day 7, down, 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 boom, wow, down, the boom, doom, 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 doom. That's crazy that I'm, I mean, all types of jams are going through my head right now because for some reason, Pusha Man, respect all due, Curtis Mayfield, and I don't even know where the hell that came from, but then just. Wearing this shirt, just putting this shirt on for this episode. Like, I mean, it. Rock was right. This joint is bright as shit. <laughs> That's one. And two, just like putting this shirt on, I hear John Cena's enters music. Like the horns and shit. The brr, brr, da, da. Like, when I, after I finished putting it on, I was brr, da, 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 and making rhymes and shit. They go along to da, 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 da. there was some shit on TV. I was watching, I think, like some old school, like ECW or something. And like, here comes Sal Below Mo. He's got the fucking wild hair. He's coming down to the ring and he looks pissed off. Or it could be happy. I don't know. Because he always looks that way. Respect all due. Sal Below Mo. But yeah, the, that's, this shirt just exudes. Seen a shit. I got a fucking Afro pick that matches the blue and Cena's 90,000 pound weights that he's carrying, that he's atlasing on his shoulders there. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah, yeah, that was awkward. Do that again. Hi. There we go. What's happening, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in to episode 97 of The Real Rush right here on YouTube. And we got some shit here for y'all this week. I would hope that your man's John Dove's got some shit for y'all because otherwise this video is just yeah. You tuned in for nothing. No, that's not the case. You tuned in for something. You tuned in for some late... I don't know if it's late breaking by this point. But it's it's news on the movie front nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get on down to that brass tacks before we get down to the 
five movies that I got reviewed here for y'all on this episode's Real Rush Tickets. So, news shit first. What's going down in the news here? I need to get like a ticker sound or something. Uh, coming up next on the news here and movie news, entertainment news, Spongebob. Yeah, so Spongebob. Spongebob, Sponge on the Run. That has been suspended until coming out on video on demand sometime next year. However, it is still going to be released theatrically in Canada. I did almost just call Canada Canadia. You've all done it. We've all done it, damn it. They're Canadians. They're not Canadians. Right? You smell what I'm cooking. Or maybe what I'm smoking. I don't know. So that's what's going down with Spongebob. Tenet. I got a release date. Instead of being, as we reported last week, postponed indefinitely. That should now be dropping on September 3rd for the Labor Day weekend. In select to be determined cities is what I read on one post, but one post did say that 80% of the United States would be able to theatrically see Tenet that weekend. That's granted that 80% of theaters are open by that weekend. Of course, we would knock on the wood here of the fucking insanely expensive Rush Tron 9000. Look at it in all its might. It comes to you. It brings high definition to your eyes. And when you feel it, it's no surprise. Cause the Rush Tron can be felt. Can't be felt by anyone. But there's more to Tenet. Just like with any Christopher Nolan movie. The Detroit Free Press reports that Tenet as has long been thought for most of the summer as the audience well not necessarily the audience test case but to be the uh, the summer tent pole as far as blockbusters go for this summer unhinged was actually supposed to be the audience test case originally and what we mean by audience test case here is that Jeebus forbid, if Tenet somehow doesn't draw an audience, if audience, and this doesn't just go for Tenet, this goes for any movie that might be coming out that weekend, but, I mean, Tenet obviously being a big movie, a lot of people are looking forward to seeing this movie, but are people willing to go to the theater to see it is a different question altogether. So, that means... If that if this doesn't make an impact, like audience-wise, that's pretty much a wrap for 2K20 until, as the DFP reports, a vaccine becomes available, is what the general public is mostly feeling at this point. So, we'll see how that goes again. Weigh in on this topic. When movie theaters do open again, and we're going to get to some dates here in a second, are you comfortable going back just yet? And when you shout out, tell us where you're from, how things are in your area, your mun municipalities and shit, and let us know here. But, Tenet, let's... Christopher Nolan is always dropping some shit at times I don't know if anybody else notices this but at times when they need to be dropped like something's always fucking going down in the country that's like some crazy shit and then Nolan drops some shit make you feel all right so Labor Day weekend let's hope I as is in the movie theater to see some tenant Bill and Ted face the music that has now been pushed to, I don't know if we reported this date 
previously or not. That's now been pushed to September 1st to a video demand, the on demand, excuse me, release and in select, in parenthesis, open theaters that weekend. So potentially opening with Tenet. That's interesting. According to Syracuse.com, Regal has set an opening date of August 21st. And AMC is still determining on sometime to mid to late August. So, once again, that's going to depend on the different areas and people, well, not necessarily people's comforts because theaters could open and just be chilling. People could be chilling. I don't know. Weigh in on that shit. Please do. AMC and Universal Studios have struck a deal. If anybody hasn't heard what's going on between AMC and Universal is the thing with everybody being at home, Universal has been releasing their movies for video on demand. And they were planning on still pretty much doing so even after theaters reopened. AMC was like, nah, -uh. if you're going to do that, we're not going to show your films. So they have struck an agreement that will allow their films to be released on the video on demand after just 17 days of theatrical release instead of a usual or average I should say 60 to 75 days theatrical release and Universal will share a portion undisclosed at this point of the VOD rental prices with AMC other theater, theater franchises are understandably not happy about this, especially Regal, who has spoken out about this, feeling possibly cheated financially with shorter windows, because this would affect everybody. Not just theaters, not just AMC theaters, this affects everybody. This is even causing some, some other franchises to threaten to not show Universal movies. How do you feel about this subject? And this, there's an interesting article that I want y'all to check out here. I found this on Collider, Collider.com. And it's, the, the title is called, Why the AMC Universal Deal is Bad for Filmmakers. And this features director Lulu Wang, who directed last year's The Farewell. If you haven't seen that, Outstanding doesn't even begin to describe the greatness that is the farewell please see the farewell if you haven't seen it lulu wang weighs in on this there's a lot of shit in this article that i agree with check it out on collider.com so let's go ahead and get on down to the five movies that we got reviewed here for y'all on this week's episodes real rush ticket i think last week we mentioned what four movies some shit like that what is going on here my shit was all over the place we had four movies yeah we only got, oh, we got two of those. We do not, however, there's no Cutthroat City again. We don't know what happened with that. Uh, apparently it dropped, but nobody knows where the fuck it dropped. And the Informer, which is in limbo too. So if you were tuning in for those two reviews, I do apologize. We will try to have those for you at some point in time when those do become available. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and kick things off with some shit that is based on the best-selling self-help book back from 2006 by Ms. Rhonda Byrne. This joint is called The Secret, Dare to Dream. And I totally forgot that this movie was dropping. This was one of the movies that I saw just one time, the trailer for it, in the theater, and it was on the last day. That was at theaters, which was Thursday, March 12th. It showed before, I still believe. Yet I digress. This stars Katie Holmes, Josh Lucas, Jerry O'Connell, Sliders, man, and Celia Weston. This follows Miranda, Katie Holmes. Hardworking and debt-ridden widowed mother of three whose life changes after a chance encounter with somewhat mysterious college professor Bray, Josh Lucas whose infectious positive outlook on life and a secret that he possesses 
may dr may drastically alter. I'm gonna go ahead and say that drastically alter Miranda and her family's entire life path. Yo, this is one of those like motivational movies that when you see the trailer for, it's like eh, that that could be good, but uh, I don't know. But then it turns out to be pretty good. This this would fall in that category. The, the secret was pretty good. I really dug this shit. And that's not just my own positively biased outlook talking here. Like, this, this shit legit struck some chords. So, hence, I love the film's message about the power of positivity. I'm surprised I'm not wearing a New Day shirt instead, because I don't have a new one yet. And the laws of attraction that the power of positivity involves. And that is a message that I think that we can all truly benefit from at any time. It doesn't have to be some crazy shit going on in the world just to get that through your through your synapses and your cortexes, corti, synapsi, whatever, man. You get that through your mind and, you know, if you haven't read the book, I haven't read the book, I know about, like, the the basis of it, which is behind this movie, of course, as well. So if it's the same thing, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree with the law of attraction as far as positivity goes, but, and that's not even actually giving anything away about the movie, yeah, but yeah, we digress. Who we going here? There was good chemistry between Miss Holmes and Mr. Lucas, though I did keep, I, I did keep waiting for Mr. Lucas to drop a uh, Home Depot promo at some point throughout the movie, and you'll see why when you see it. And it's fucking hilarious once you get stuck in your brain. And this movie does offer much introspection as far as how can I better myself for the betterment of others. And that's not, again, that's not giving anything away here, but it's a positive fucking movie. It's a positive movie. It could be considered predictable at points or maybe even throughout. But, that doesn't keep the film's momentum from delivering on what it needs to deliver on. It's a $20 rental fee on VOD. That's what I questioned at first, too. I know I feel the same way when I, the way you, that hits you as soon as you heard $20. Is it worth it? Not only is it worth it, I say it's well worth the rental price for the deliverance of some hope. Hope's good, man. So overall, The Secret, Dare to Dream, it's a genuine, inspirational, crowd-pleaser, fit for the whole family. Peep it. Peep it. Peep it. One thing I did find interesting, a little trivia note here, this was produced, well, part of the production team, or the producer team, I should say, for this movie, were two of the Fertitas, I believe Joseph and Frank, Junior, maybe, or the third. I don't know how many Fatitas there are, but of former UFC business. So they went from cage fighting to power positivity. Fuck yeah. The Secret Dare to Dream. Check it out, y'all. Next up on this episode is Real Rush Ticket. Ooh, here's the one movie that we mentioned last or excuse me, one of the two movies that we mentioned last week that we said we were going to have. And we, that we actually did deliver on. And the name of this joint is... Black is King. This joint is the new Disney Plus exclusive musical film and visual album written and directed by Miss Beyonce. And it serves as a tie-in to last year's album, The Lion King, The Gift, which she curated for last year's semi-live-action, CGI-ish remake. This film, told through the voices of present-day black artists, and through the musical styles of Miss Beyoncé, and a lot of other peeps, too. There's a lot of cameos up in this joint. It follows a young African king who's cast out into the world set on a journey a self-identity to become the man that he's meant to be 
this shit. Just as I stated in my Instagram post on this joint, it totally delivered on what I was is what I was looking for, and it, it was visually captivating and vis viscerally stimulating. This joint is art. Capital A, capital R, capital T, art. You could tell. I mean, well, she mentioned that Beyonce mentioned that she worked day and night on this for over a year, and it totally shows in the end product of Black is King. Black is King reminded me at times of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and I know that's a bold, bold statement. It's a bold statement. And I'm not saying that it's as good as Michael Jackson Moonwalker. There are very few music video movies, for lack of a better term, that can fucking even come close, in my honest opinion, I'm ho, to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I say that with much tenacity. That's not a digression, but just just to see for, so you can see where I'm coming from as far as Moonwalker goes. So I'm not saying that this is go as good as Moonwalker by any means, but it did remind me of Moonwalker with its rhythmic flow of storytelling. However, at the same time, and this is a weird little twist, it also reminded me at times of the Who's Tommy movie version with its visuals and the way that they presented themselves at you from your respective insanely expensive restaurants. Speaking of the visuals, I love the mixed use of the old cameras and the film stock and the use of the new, obviously, newer digital equipment. Same as Moonwalker, I will say. I could see this serving as motivation for upcoming visionary filmmakers. And there are quite a few deep ass notable quotables within this film that will make you think it is synaptically stimulating as well only about an hour and 26 minutes and it's delivering Jesus I was getting really cool I got real like just like damn <laughs> this movie is still like fucking knocking me yeah overall holy shit overall black is king truly has to be seen to be believed it will stick with you obviously as you can see what I'm going through right now well after it is all said and done I mean I already liked it watching it I was feeling it and I walked away from like all right that, 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 that was that was definitely dope that was definitely dope but after sleeping on it last night I thought even higher of it today and that's a rare case in any movie I don't care what genre it comes from so I, I believe that it'll it'll stick to it'll stick to your ribs as well and it does offer important introspection on family and about the company that you keep regardless of ethnic background y'all Everybody can gain something, stands to gain something, for watching Black is King. Once again, exclusive Disney Plus. So if you got that shit, check it out. If not, get on that Disney Plus. Well, I'm going to get on the Seagram's Ginger Ale. Because I'm drinking it, and they paying for it. Frank or late. Casanova. Doom. Da -boom, doom, doom. Pure canola. Next up on this episode's Real Rush Ticket is the other movie of the two that I mentioned that we're going to have reviewed for you this week 
from last week out of the four that we mentioned that we would possibly have a review for y'all. This joint is called Summerland. This stars Gemma Arterton. Gemma Arterton. There you go. Arterton. Hey, 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 hey. Gemma Arterton as a reclusive writer who is reluctantly entrusted to temporarily foster a young London boy during World War II, forming a bond with him over time, as well as this whole situation that she's been put in, it causes her to reflect on a lost love, which may be the very root of her current reclusivity. Ah, I guess that's a word, reclusivity. Is it a word? I don't know what we just said in post, but awesome if it is, then, well, if it ain't, then we just fucking invented one. Summerland. Loved it. No, I mean, I love this fucking movie. I loved this movie right here. Summerland, y'all. Every special minute of it. Every special minute of it. Especially. How the story gracefully swerves. Not just swerves. And again, this ain't even giving anything away because you don't even know what's coming. It gracefully swerves from one genre to another. Flawlessly. Flawless. Flawlessly. Throwing me and you as the viewer for one Perfecto, magnifico, heartwarming loop. Archerton kills it with her impeccable balance between being a nasty woman and having a woman with a heart of gold. And the screenplay is outright just hilarious at times. Overall, Summerland, this is this week's Real Rush main event. The Dark Horse, right? Who'd have thought Summerland was gonna take that fucking title this week? Well, it did, suckers. Summerland, this week's Real Rush main event. Do not let this joint slip beneath yo radar, suckers. This is another one that I feel that people would just like, eh, pass right on by. Nah, give it a chance. And again, even if you're not into movies like this, like, give it a chance. Give it a chance. You'll be surprised. Summerland. Check it out. Video on demand. I forget what the rental price is, but it ain't much. Five, six bucks. It's well worth it. Obviously it is, or I wouldn't call it this week's Real Rush main a motherfucking event. Summerland. Check it out, y'all. Next up on this episode's Real Rush Ticket is a movie that I've been hearing about. For quite a minute and now it's just dropped over here on VOD this joint is called Enter the Fat Dragon with our boy Donnie Yen Ip Man and homeschool from Rogue One I forget what the name was in Rogue One I'm sure I typed it in there there thank you post dub all right, so enter the fact dragon. Enter the facts dragon. Enter the fact dragon. What's a fact? F A K. Does that word exist? This is a remake, or really more of a reboot, especially if you ask Donnie Yen or director Wong Jing of Sammo Hung's 1978 film. Of the, same, of the same name. And this stars our boy Donnie Yen as a badass police officer, y'all, who becomes overweight as a result of a demotion as well as some relationship issues. And he seeks to redeem himself after being placed on a special assignment. And this shit right here, it's fucking fun as hell, y'all. 
Ed of the Fat Dragon, I found this to be much in the same vein as joints like Rumble in the Bronx or Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, yeah, Kung Fu Hustle. I don't know if you can see that shit right there or if I can even zoom in on that shit or something, but boom, it's right there. Kung Fu Hustle. The original DVD, which is, yes, yeah, still in the shrink wrap. That might be a worth a pretty penny someday. Yet I digress. Anywho, why is it in the same vein as those two movies? It's in that because we're in the the off the wall action sequences are matched by that of the film's slapstick humor and wit. So overall, if you're in the market for just a good brain disconnect action comedy You've come to the right place. This is the new shit. Stand up and bitch. This is for you. Into the fat dragon. Well, definitely worth the fucking rental price. Into the fat dragon. Find it on your video on demand. I found it on Prime Video. That's the one that I'm always... I, I don't like to use the word preaching, but the one I'm always... Eh, not selling either, but the one I'm always talking about. So, you prime video, awesome. If not, get your search on. End of the Fat Dragon. Worth the search, worth the fucking rental price. Check it out. Last, but most certainly not least, on this episode's Real Rush Ticket, is a joint that actually dropped last weekend, and it was not on Wikipedia's list of American films of 2020. When we wanted to go film episode 96 last weekend. It somehow popped up there over the week. This joint dropped on Netflix last weekend. I don't know if I already said that or not, but it did. This joint is called Animal Crackers. This is this week's catch-up? No, we're not having a fucking segment called The Real Rush Catch-Up. Because we didn't even know that it dropped, alright? So, we... We, we getting it to y'all right here, right now, on fucking episode 97. Yeah, I digress. Animal Crackers is a new-ish, and not just because it came out last week. There's a difference. There's a reason that I say new-ish, and I'm going to get to the actual official reason here in a second. Animated film that follows a man named Owen, family man named Owen, whom, after being entrusted with a magical box of animal crackers that turn him into whichever animal that he shall eat upon cracker wise of course he must use them to save the family circus from the clutches of his evil uncle this shit boasts a huge voice cast you got John Krasinski as Owen you got Emily Blunt as his wife as she is in real life you got Danny DeVito Ian McKellen having a blast up in it, you could tell. Sylvester Stallone does a voice up in it. You got Raven Simone, Patrick Warburton, Gilbert Gottfried, who I'm singling out as my personal favorite voice out of the entire voice cast of this movie. And Harvey Firestein, just to name a couple. And this is one that is way better than expected. And I only say that because given its history, and that's why I say new-ish, animated film. This had some production history just getting over here to the United States. Like this dropped in China a long time ago. Like this is a 2017 film and it had a minute, it went through a couple of hands here to get you know proper distribution rights here in the United States. Netflix finally got their hands on it and they fucking turned it into a hit. And I usually, I mean I say that because Usually a movie that is given that many production troubles. And the same, I believe I said the same thing about My Spy a couple weeks ago. Generally, it's just common consensus for some reason that a movie that's being tossed around like that, it must not be good. So that spells for movie failure before it even hits anybody's eyeballs. And this shit right here totally dispels that general notion. It was already number five for the week. I think total. 
then both movies and TV combined on Netflix by the time we peeped it the other night. So peeps are definitely watching this. Kids are going to have a blast regardless with this movie. I think some adults will have a blast regardless with this movie. But if it helps you, this joint is, yeah, this joint is definitely 420 friendly. I found myself getting happier and happier with this movie the more I watched it and the more I got happier and happier throughout the movie. Overall, it's a good family watch. Good family watch. Round up your posse and check out Animal Crackers, y'all. Now on Netflix. Everybody got Netflix. If you don't, now you know, motherfucker. I don't know where I was going with that. Where was I going with that? I know where I'm going with that. The fact that right now, that is a wrap for episode 98 of The Real Rush. 98? No. What the fuck? 97. It's a wrap of episode 97 right here on YouTube. We gonna get to 98 here next weekend. Sorry for the, the itching here. The, the, the stash is coming in quite nicely. and I ain't never had my shit like this long before. And it's, it's a little itchy. Yet I digress. Man problems. Episode 98 will be coming your way next weekend. And we'll be right here back with y'all. Maybe with three new movie reviews. I already know that there's a maybe in here. But episode 98, we'll be back here. Fuck it. Give me the, the rush board back. Episode 98. We'll be back here next week with the reviews for An American Pickle. That's going to be dropping on HBO Max. That is the first ever official, what you call it, uh, movie to be released solely by HBO Max. So, awesome for y'all. We also have the reviews for The Tax Collector. Our boy David Ayer, back at the director's helm. Fuck yeah. And this is the questionable one. Words on bathroom walls. And I say questionable because I found multiple dates for this. So, put that on the maybe pile, but if we see it obviously we'll have the review for that but in the meantime as always you want to keep up on the goings on of what's going on with your fellow bandits out in ashburn virginia at the stagecoach theater company y'all by keeping track of us on our website and on facebook stagecoachtc.com that is stagecoach t is in time c is in coach.com and check us out on facebook face facebook that's what it's called right yeah Facebook, the book of face, Stagecoach Theater Company. Once again, we're the ones out in Ash Point, Virginia. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any shit like that, feel free to type those on into the comment section of the page where you are viewing this week's episode of The Real Rush on YouTube right here, right now. To everybody who has subscribed to The Real Rush here on YouTube thus far, thank you for having done so. If you haven't done so yet, what the hell are you waiting for? You, you not only want to be the first to know when your boy drops a new episode, but we're on episode 97, y'all. We only just a couple weeks away from episode 100. You know your boy's going to have some epic shit planned for that. What's going to be on the ticket for that shit? And I don't mean just review-wise, but episode-wise in general. Who the fuck knows? And I'm not saying that to keep y'all in suspense because I don't even fucking know. So, you want to know, subscribe your ass. Keep your ass in the know of what's going on in the real rush. And speaking of in the know of what's going on in the real rush, actually, no, this had nothing to do with that. But, love, exciting and new, come aboard. We're expecting you, the love boat, sometime, what, hold on, sometime when you get another the love boat, the heavy one, oh shit, yo, if I 
I grow my afro out enough, I could be Isaac for Halloween. For a party that I can't fucking go to. I'll be able to be Isaac from the love boat on a fucking Zoom Halloween party. Oh, yay. Anywho. Speaking of the love boat, there's love in the title. Everybody should still be spreading love these days, ladies and gents. And in the same manner, please spread the word of the real rush in the same way. So, you know, distant, socially distant, socially distant hug a motherfucker and tell them about the real rush. And let them know that the real rush has replay value. Any movie that you want to know what your boy John Dub thought about and thought, thought, thought of. Get a good honest to God review on. All you got to do is go up to the YouTube search bar at the top of the page here. Type in quotation marks, The Real Rush, followed by outside of quotation marks, the title of the movie that you're looking for, and then boom, instant movie review on demand for you because your man John Dub and The Real Rush got y'all covered for life, son. And as always, ooh, wait a minute. And as always, you can follow your man John Dub on Instagram. For my live movie check-ins and updates as they occur. And you can follow your man at J Dub Champion. Hashtag the real rush. And for the real rush, ladies and gents, I am your man John Dub. Thank y'all once again for tuning in to the real rush here on YouTube. Hope y'all had a blast watching this as much as I just had recording this shit here for y'all. So Enjoying, speaking of enjoying, enjoy yourselves out there, y'all. You know, don't let the shit of the world get you down too terribly much. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of one another, take care of yourselves. Positive, watch the secret, it'll help. Trust, it'll help. Chill the hell out. Have fun, y'all. Love Jada. And. We'll see you next weekend. Uh, peace. And... You got anything else to say? Now's the time to fucking say it. Barry about to die. You about to wreck the shit out of that damn thing. You gonna wreck the shit out of that goddamn pickup truck there? You gonna wreck... You know, damn on... Now don't wreck the shit out of the pickup truck there. Motherfucking carburetor sitting out there on Route 11. Goddamn engine block sitting down there on Route 17. And out there on goddamn Route 27, you got the back of the fucking bumper. Like, what did you do? Like, I mean, did you go through the forest or did the forest go through you? God damn it. I don't even know how the hell that you get three different pieces of fucking car in three different parts of the goddamn state. That that ain't even in the same goddamn county or nothing. Cause ain't nobody there ain't nobody there got in any 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 kin. Ain't no, ain't nobody there related to, to nobody. And that's how you can tell that you two goddamn far apart where people stop getting relations to one another. That's how you know that you are way too far apart to for, for fucking shake. So why are uh, there three different parts of the car in three different parts of the fucking state there, son? 